Now get him back with our continued series of study in the Colossian epistle. And we've been looking at uh, the five-sided, four epistle, or rather four-chaptered epistle of Colossian. Five sides to understanding the epistle of Colossians. We started out with the preeminent side, pretty, pretty much Colossians chapter 1, Christ and His preeminence mentioned in verse 18 and he is the preeminent one as i said this morning he's the one that's most excellent he's the one that's reverend he's the one that's greater amen and so we see in chapter 2 we dealt somewhat in our uh, starting our lessons out on the pure doctrinal side of this epistle as he refutes the false teaching and the heresy of his day as he penned it down to the church at Colossae and then in chapter number well chapter number three and chapter two as well we saw the 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 positional side of this epistle and of course in embodied in chapter three the practical side and he closes it out with the with the personal side of this epistle with colossians chapter four so again tonight we're picking up and looking more so at position and practical applications to the epistle of colossians and i shall read as i've said now colossians 3 verse 3 and 4 and no, pay attention now as i read because we're gonna we're gonna talk again a little bit further on the god appointed life and the christ centered life these two subjects we're addressing uh, under the main subject the life and living of every believer in christ in colossians 3 3 as he pins it down and he's writing to the believers to the saints right here or to those that are in cry and he said for ye are dead that's the reality of accounting that we mentioned and he said your life is hid with christ in god and so that's the reality of assurance but he said in verse four now when christ who is our life. And that's the reality of acceptance. Amen. Oh, we've been accepted in Him. And He is our life. He is all of our life. He's the source of all of our life. And He said, shall appear the reality of appearing. And He said, then shall ye also appear with Him in glory amen and so that's somewhat of reading these these two verses now but dropping down to verse number 10 he's really getting into the thick of things on the practical side following up with the pure doctrinal side we've addressed somewhat and the positional side now he's calling on believers to and we've been dealing with relationships and reality and now here's the responsibility that comes along with it as being saved and he said in verse 10 and have put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him and so he's talking about you and I, thank God, they're not only chosen in Christ, that's Ephesians 1, 4, but you and I that are created in Christ, Ephesians 2, 10, where it said and that we are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which He before ordained that we should walk in them. And oh, thank God for the creative work of the Holy Ghost of God. I'm telling you that done a circumcision, and that's in Colossians chapter 2, verse 11. A circumcision of the heart. 
whereby he, I tell you, let us pass from death unto life, and from darkness unto light, and from Satan unto God, and from condemnation unto justification. He created us in Christ. He performed an operation on us and cut us loose from what we was in Adam. Sinners lost and without God and cut off from God. And so he said here and put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. And of course we've done read in Colossians 2, 9 and 10 over in our lessons of past that he Christ is the head of all principality and power and in him is the fullness of the Godhead bodily and he said he's telling us we're complete in him i don't know how better you could put it on this day god done a finished work in his through his son on the cross when he bowed his head and said it is finished, it meant it was done, it was accomplished, and come out and said amen to the words he said, it is finished. And when he saved us, I'm telling you, it was a finished work, amen. I'm telling you, he didn't cobble up something, he done a complete work. Philippians 1, 6 said, being confident, of this very thing he which hath begun a good work in you shall perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. And so we're chosen in Christ, created in Christ, complete in Christ. But notice in verse 11 now of Colossians 3 verse 11. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew. No circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in you all. And that's really going to connect when we talk about this in Christ, uh, 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 this in Christ centeredness. We're going to be talking about the Christ centered life. He's our all and in all. Amen. And he said in verse 12 now, put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do you. Kind of sounds like Galatians 5.22 here that I've just read about the fruit, the fruit in the singular, the fruit of the Spirit of God. Amen. And so we've read now this portion, and I want us to turn over, and I don't want to get away from where I need to tonight, but we're thumbing over to John chapter 15. And I want to read these first eight verses, and that'll kind of prepare the way for down the way, the Lord willing, and, and talk about this, uh, uh, this in Christ centeredness. The, the Christ-centered life. And we're looking in John chapter 15. And the setting of this chapter is not conditions for salvation. Not at all. That's not what this text has, has got in view. It's got all in view of the conditions for fruit bearing. And I've jotted this down. We see that the father is the husbandman in verse 1. And that Christ is the vine, the true vine. And that the branches are believers in Christ. As I've said, conditions for fruit bearing. And he talks about cleansing, abiding, and obedience. Amen. Now let's just read these eight verses. And that will kind of give, us, give me a door open to kind of bring this little message for uh, this evening. But in John 15, and the Lord's here now, I'm speaking on the way to the Garden of Gethsemane. And he said, and he did talk about things around him. He did use things around him that they could understand. Amen. And he said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. 
And it's not got anything to do with losing salvation in John 15. Because it's it's not conditions for salvation. He's not dealing with salvation. He's dealing with fruit bearing. Amen. And he said, For branch in me and me, in me, notice that term, that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. And he said, Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. Or oh, again, following relationship and reality is this uh, subject of responsibility. And we have a responsibility. I tell you, when we get saved, to fall in line and follow after the ways of our Lord Jesus Christ. Or oh, we're not left to our own self to do our own thing. And somebody's looking at us and what they see in us. Do they see Jesus or do they see a foul spirit? And here he's talking about this fruit. Of the, really, really, in all essence, the the good fruit that the the believer that bears good fruit. But in verse five, he said, "I am the vine; ye are the branches. And he that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. And if a man abideth not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them." And cast them into the fire, and they are burned. And if if ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. And again, I say he's not he's not talking about conditions for salvation. Not at all. He's talking about conditions for bearing fruit. Amen. And I'll tell you things that will produce uh, uh, and bring honor and glory to the Lord Jesus. Oh, discipleship. He mentions it in verse So shall you be my disciple. That means followers of the Lord. Those that have discipled their ways to follow the Lord Jesus. Amen. Now let's just look at And I'm going to jump back just a little bit in review and talk about this God appointed life real briefly tonight and just kind of capture some of what we've been dealing with and I said the God appointed life is the redeemed life. We've got a redeemed life. He redeemed us and rescued us from loss. That's another way of saying what redeemed me. He re rescued a, a soul from loss. Amen. All oh, the life that God has given us. Thank God. A life of deliverance. He's delivered us from condemnation. Uh, uh, that's past tense. He's delivered us from the curse of the law. That's Galatians 3.13. He's delivered uh, from the course of this world. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 and 2. He's delivered us from the corruption that is in the world. 2 Peter 1 4. And so we can say in the God of pointed light, He's done the calling and He's done the choosing and He's done the ordaining. He's the one that has given us eternal life. And the God of pointed light is, is a redeemed life. He's rescued us from law. And it's a regenerated life. We get that word from, from Titus 3, 5. It means to have new life. New life from God. I'm telling you. I tell you the night I got saved. Amen. I tell you I got a new life. Amen. Oh thank God. I didn't get reformed. No. On your life. I got regenerated. I got born from above. I tell you God I'm telling you 
born me with his spirit. Amen. Well, Titus 3, 5 said, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but it's according to his mercy that he saved it by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. I tell you, I make a whole lot of the Holy Ghost because he, he's the only one could have done for us what we couldn't do for ours was a dead alien sinner lost uh, to ourself and lost to God uh, and God had to awaken us and the Spirit done that I tell you he said that not by works of right all oh, this crowds come too late to convince this preacher in these days that we're living in and that old thing I tell you used to come up a lot when I was growing up and sometimes it raises it head, head again in these days all this crowd that think they've got enough worth and enough works to uh, to, to meet God and, and, and I tell you to bring themselves to God but I'm telling you man's a worthless uh, uh, he's a worthless creature uh, and, and destined for hell apart from Christ uh, and I'm telling you God uh, didn't overhaul the flesh. He regenerated us. He made us a new creation in Christ. And so we've got a redeemed life. We've got a regenerated life. And then we've got a resurrected life. Amen. Or again, Ephesians 2 1. And you have he quickened. That means made alive who were dead in trespasses and sin. And God turned on the life the night I got saved. Amen. And thank God, God brought me out of darkness and into the marvelous light. Oh, I'm telling you, He gave me eternal life that very night. That's always been with God. Eternal life means no had no beginning and no ending. Amen. And we just got in and on it. Amen. And we say it's a resurrected life. We say it's a it, it is a revealed life. Amen. And I put this down here. This revealed life is revealed in the hope of eternal life. Amen. I'm not hoping I'm going to make it. I know I'm going to make it because he promised that when I accepted his great gift that he give me life and life eternal in Titus 1 2 in hope of eternal life which God who cannot lie promised before the world began. And so that's a little bit more on this God appointed life. But now let's just focus on for the last part of this message tonight. Not only on the God appointed life but the Christ centered life. Amen. And I'm looking and we're right here in Colossians chapter No, notice in Colossians chapter 1 and we're going to read Read verse uh, number 11 and notice down through verse number 14. And I think it's fitting that we, we find this showing up in the first chapter of Colossians. Amen. This Christ-centered life. And he said here in Colossians 1.12, and, and Paul had been here praying his prayer his sevenfold prayer really in all essence that starts in verse number nine where he said that since the day we heard it he said we don't cease to pray for you and desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding now look at that it, ye might walk worthy of the lord unto all pleasing being fruitful in every good work. Amen. And I've tied John 15 with all the fruit bearing a believer, the fruit bearing life. Amen. Well, he said, be pleasing and be fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. And here it is, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the 
the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Amen. And so I say on this day the Christ centered life. He, he's the center over and I don't want us to ever get over it. Amen. That God seeing us in Christ holy and without blame as I've done said he's, he's seeing us as we really are in the very sight of God. I tell you believers in Christ in a holy standing before him. Amen. But thank God he's seeing us identified with Christ. Amen. Oh I tell you we've been by the way of the cross and we're identified with his dead crucified with him. We've been by the way of his resurrection. We were risen with him. And we've been by the way of him ascending up and setting up. We sat down in him. That's Ephesians 1 3. And, and we're going to be by the way of his appearing. As I've read tonight when he shall appear we shall appear with him in glory. Where he's at we're going to be for all time and he eternity but we're seeing this Christ centeredness God's not only seeing us in Christ God's not only seeing us identified with Christ but he's seeing us the Spirit of God in us Christ in us amen and we read that in Colossians 1 27 and I'm looking down at it tonight to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentile, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. And God's made known this mystery. He's revealed it. Amen. All oh, the ever believer in Christ, everyone the Spirit has brought in and regenerated. And I tell you, applied the blood of Christ to our heart. I'm telling you, He's not only put us in Christ but I'm telling you we possess Christ. He's in us. You can't get any better to say it, the Christ centered life. Amen. For Christ to be in us. Amen. Oh Paul said it and I don't get tired of giving Galatians 2.20 where he said I am crucified with Christ. I tell you everywhere Paul would go he'd strike up a note about his conversion. What happened to him on the road to Damascus when God struck him down and brought conviction and converted and changed, changed his life and sent him out to preach the glory glorious uh, gospel of the blessed God uh, where God is no respect of person uh, willing and able to save both Jew and Gentile alike uh, but Paul would strike up in every place amen uh, God had told him amen he's my chosen vessel to bear my name before the Gentiles uh, and the children of Israel and kings uh, and all oh, you won't read long the missionary journeys of this great apostle uh, to you come aware of the fact that Paul wasn't ashamed of what the Lord did for him. Amen. He said, I'm crucified with Christ. Uh, nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me and the life which I now live in the flesh. He said, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And a bigger thing is God in the person of the Holy Spirit. A bigger thing is God in the person of our Lord Jesus in us. I tell you, we've got assurance as the song we sung tonight. We've got that blessed assurance. All oh, thank God of glory divine. Heirs of salvation. A purchase of God. Washed in His blood. And on the good song would go. But I'm Seeing, thank God the Christ centered life. Amen. Christ in us. 
Amen. And now that we're saved, He's, he's calling on us uh, to center our life around the one person, our Lord Jesus Christ. Now look at it in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 21. And I've gave these verses over so much and I, I feel like I'm, I'm doing it maybe too much. But it, look at it. As he wrote to the church at Philippi. And here we're seeing as I look down at Philippians chapter number 1. This great epistle that he penned down to the church at at Philippi. And of course in this chapter 1 we're seeing that Christ is the beginning of our faith. Colossians chapter 2 verse 6 we're seeing that Christ is the continuation of our faith in Colossians 2 6. And that Christ is the that Christ is the uh, we might say the outward working of our faith. faith. Colossians 2 verse 7. But look at Philippians chapter number 1. And I should be there and I've got my pages all fouled up here. But in Philippians chapter number 1 and verse number 20. Look what Paul said backing up to verse 19. And he said for I know this that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. And Paul was ever thanking God for this church that had devoted uh, their help uh, to the Apostle Paul and his ministry. Amen. And he said in verse 20, according to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed but that with all boldness as always so now also Christ shall Christ shall be magnified in my body whether it be by life or by death. And so I'm I'm saying this bird is a highlight for this subject I'm dealing with in the last portion tonight. The Christ centered life. The life that centers around the one person of our Lord Jesus. Paul was so devoted. Thank God. He hit the road preaching after he got saved. Amen. Uh, preaching immediately that Christ was the Son of God. And even of course they had to drop him down and uh, down the wall in a basket that uh, the Jews wanted to kill him. I take get rid of him because uh, of the message that he preached. Because of the Christ he was representing that, that he once persecuted the church. But here we're seeing that he said that Christ shall be magnified in my body whether it be by life or death. And what a desire. What a determination in the heart of this great apostle. No wonder that he went in the far regions of uh, I tell you to, to go to the Gentiles. Uh, and the far regions where nobody else would go with a gospel message. Amen. He had it on his heart in one jail and after another. When he'd hit the road after he'd come out of jail. I tell you, he went preaching. Amen. And I'm telling you, thank God. His desire, he said that Christ may be magnified in my body. And he said, whether it be by life or death. Now look at the next verse. For to me to live is Christ. And, and to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I would not. For I am in a trait between two, uh, having a desire to do part and be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. Amen. And in Paul's day, there was those that was preaching uh, uh, that one would preach Christ of contention not sincerely supposing he said to add the affliction to my bonds in verse 16 and in verse 17 but the other of love knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. That's what Paul was all about. Uh, well, his life was centered around the one person 
our Lord, and when we get away from, from this Bible, uh, and when we get away from our God's, uh, uh, God ordained responsibility, as say, I tell you, that's when we get away from the Lord. I'm to, we get far away from representing who He is. I'm afraid a lot of times that preachers, and I'm, 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 I'm pointing to preachers on this day, and pastors in church, sometimes we get far away from what we ought to be doing representing the Lord when we come into this pulpit I've got a responsibility to preach Christ and Him crucified that's what Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter number 2 he said I came not with excellency of speech or wisdom declaring the testimony of God he said I was with you with meekness and fear and much trembling and my preaching was not in the demonstration or the wisdom of men but in the demonstration of the spirit and power of God that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men but in the power of God also the Christ centered life Paul said I want to magnify the Lord Jesus he's my life for me to live he said is Christ and and to die is gain. Amen. Oh, thank God. Christ in our heart. Now I'm going to read Ephesians chapter 3. And then we're going to close tonight. And we'll save it for the next lesson, Lord willing. But look at Ephesians chapter 3. Again, one of his prayers that he prayed with the two in Ephesians epistle. But in Ephesians chapter 3, notice what he said in verse number 13 and he said wherefore I desire that you faint not at my tribulations for you which is your glory don't sound like he had it comfortable don't sound like that he he had it at ease and everything was was that hunky dory I tell you he was a man that went through a lot of suffering and he su he went through tribulation and for the church at Colossae he he was filling up that which was appointed for the church at Colossae the trip he said these tribulate I don't want you to lose heart at my tribulation he said it's for your glory for this call I bow my knees unto the father of our Lord Jesus Christ of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named and here's his prayer that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened notice with might by his spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith and I, I no doubt somebody's going to say well I thought you said Christ was in a he is in in position wide or in our standing God seeing us Christ in us amen but all after we're saved we ought to put him on the throne of our heart amen and he said that Christ may dwell that's another way of saying that Christ may abide in your hearts by faith and you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height and to know the love of Christ uh, which passes knowledge and that you might be filled with the fullness of God and I'm afraid sometimes we're filled with foolishness and the things of this world and how our hearts uh, I need to pay attention to Paul's prayer he desired that these saints at Ephesus and all believers in that they might be strengthened that they might get strength for this inner man and that Christ may dwell in our our hearts by faith all that we be rooted and grounded in love and may be able to comprehend with all saying what is the breadth the length and the depth and the height and to know the love of Christ which passes all knowledge amen oh thank God tonight for an inner uh, for a Christ a, a centered life a, a life that centers around the one person of the Lord Jesus 
And I don't know no other person that deserves all the honor and the glory. Oh, it's the Lord Jesus. Amen. All oh, to Him be all honor and praise and glory. And we're limited down here. I grant you, we're limited down here in the honor and the praise that we, we give Him. Sometimes we intentionally just go by this way. And I tell you, just to let our life get out of hand. And all oh, we don't take time to glorify the Lord Jesus but all we are to do on a daily basis I tell you is the days that God's give all oh, let us glorify the Lord Jesus in everything we do amen and that's what Paul told us in Colossians 3 we could read that how on in the study where I read from tonight and he said whatever you do and word or do do all for the glory of of God. It's Him that deserves a praise. Father,